Chapter 5 Learning to Live on Another Planet it seemed that Tao was also very popular here and she found herself answering numerous questions always with her natural, broad smile. Before long, however, several of our hosts were required to resume their duties and we took this as our cue to leave. My mask was put on again and we left these people, as well as those in the larger room, amidst many gestures of friendship and goodwill. We rejoined our vehicle and immediately accelerated away in the direction of a forest, which could be seen in the distance. We flew at a height of approximately 5 or 6 meters and at a speed I would have estimated to be 70 or 80 kilometers per hour. The air was warm and fragrant and I again felt euphoric, in a way I had never experienced on earth. We arrived at the edge of the forest and I remember having been greatly impressed by the size of the largest trees. They look to rise about 200 meters into the sky. The tallest is 240 of your meters, Michel. Tao explained without me having to ask, and between 20 and 30 meters in diameter at the base. Some of these are 8,000 of our years old. Our year consists of 333 days of 26 karsas. A kars is a period of 55 lors, a lors comprising 70 kasios and a casio being almost equivalent to one of your seconds. Would you like to go to your apartment or to have a look at the forest first? Let's visit the forest first, Tao. The vehicle greatly reduced its speed and we were able to glide between, or indeed, stop and observe more closely, the trees at heights that ranged from almost ground level to 10 meters above the ground. Tao was able to guide our flying platform with amazing precision and expertise. Our vehicle and Tao's manner of driving it, put me in mind of a flying carpet, which was taking me on a magical tour of this magnificent forest floor. Tao leaned towards me and removed my mask. The undergrowth was luminous and softly golden, but I found it quite tolerable. It is a good time to begin accustoming yourself to the light and color, Michelle. Look. Following her gaze, I spotted, very high among the branches, three butterflies, vividly colored and of enormous size. These Lepidoptera, which must have had one-meter wingspans, fluttered high in the foliage, but we were lucky to see them fly closer and closer to us, on wings of blue, green and orange. It is as clear to me as if it were yesterday. They brushed against us with their wings that were strangely fringed, to create the most beautiful and breathtaking effect. One of them came to rest on a leaf just a few meters from us, and I was able to admire its body, ringed with silver and gold, and its jade-green antennae. Its proboscis was golden, and the tops of its wings were green with streaks of bright blue alternated with dark orange diamond shapes. The undersides were dark blue, but luminous, as though they had been illuminated from above by a projector. For the duration of time this giant insect remained on the leaf, it seemed to emit a soft whistling sound, and I was quite surprised by this. I had certainly not heard a Lepidopteran on Earth make any sound at all. Of course, we were no longer on Earth, but on Thioba, and this was only the beginning of a long series of surprises for me. On the forest floor, grew an incredible variety of plants, each one stranger than the next. They covered the ground completely, but I noticed very few bushes among them. I imagine the forest giants prevented them from developing. In size, these plants varied from a ground-covering moss-like plant to one the size of a large rose bush. One kind, with leaves as thick as a hand in various shapes sometimes heart-shaped or circular, sometimes very long and thin, was of a color tending much more towards blue than to green. Flowers of every shape and color, even of the purest black, entwined each other. From our altitude of several meters, the effect was absolutely glorious. We rose till we were up among the highest branches, and I put my mask back on according to Tao's direction. We emerged from the canopy and moved slowly, just above the foliage of those enormous trees. Above the forest the light was, once again, incredibly intense and I had the impression of traveling through a landscape of pure crystal. Marvelous birds were perched on the tops of the taller trees, watching us pass, without fear. Their colors, varied and rich, were a veritable feast for my eyes in spite of the subduing effect of my mask. Here were varieties of macaw, with blue, yellow, pink and red plumage, and, among them a type of bird of paradise strutted amidst a cloud of what appeared to be hummingbirds. 
These hummingbirds were of a brilliant red color, flecked with gold. The red, pink, and orange tail feathers of the birds of paradise would have measured 250 centimeters in length and their wingspans almost 2 meters. When these jewels took flight, the underside of their wings revealed a very soft, misty pink, with just a touch of bright blue on the tips so unexpected, especially as the tops of their wings were of an orange-yellow color. Their heads wore plumes of impressive size, each feather being a different color, yellow, green, orange, black, blue, red, white, cream. I feel frustrated that my attempts to describe the colors I saw on Thioba are so inadequate I feel I need a whole new lexicon, as my language fails me. I had the constant impression that the colors came from within the objects I looked at, and the color was more than I had known it to be. On Earth, we know perhaps 15 shades of red, here there must have been over a hundred. It wasn't only the colors that claimed my attention. The sounds that I had heard since we began to fly over the forest inspired me to seek an explanation from Tao. It was almost a background music, very light and soft, similar to a flute which continually played the same air, but at a distance. As we moved on, the music seemed to change, only to return to the original tune. Is that music I hear? It is vibrations emitted by the thousands of insects which, when combined with the vibrations of the colors reflected by solar rays onto certain plants, such as the xenoxy, for example, produce the very musical results that you hear. We, ourselves, only hear it if we particularly attune to it, for it comprises an integral part of our life and our environment. It is restful, isn't it? Absolutely. According to the experts, if these vibrations were to cease, we would experience considerable eye trouble. This will perhaps seem odd at first, since these vibrations appear to be perceptible to the ear rather than the eye. However, experts are experts, Michel, and, in any case, it is of little concern to us, for they also say that the chance of their ceasing is as remote as the chance of our sun extinguishing itself tomorrow.